Out of all you'll spend on shooting this year, this is the most important, a membership in the NRA. Join at ShootingUSA.com and I'll pay $10 for you. It's that important. The best ammunition for personal defense now includes rifle ammunition. Critical Defense Rifle, available in 223 and 308, featuring FTX bullets with flex tip technology that keeps the nose cavity free from clogging and also assists bullet expansion at low velocity. When lives are on the line, only the best will do. In the last years of the 19th century, firearms technology was rapidly advancing. Smokeless powder was replacing black powder and the magazine-fed bolt-action rifle was the new standard in firepower on the battlefield. The U.S. solution to replace the single-shot trap door was adopting a Scandinavian design, the Craig Jorgensen, that's now one of history's guns. History remembered and sponsored by the Civilian Marksmanship Program. It is sometimes known as a one-war gun, but that label hardly tells the story of the historic Craig Jorgensen. Basically, they call it a one-war rifle. It was used pretty much during the Spanish-American War in the Philippines, and then it was uh, superseded by the 03 Springfield, one of the, the all-time greatest bolt-action military rifles ever. Even so, Gary James believes the Craig Jorgensen holds an important place in U.S. small arms history. Still, it's fair to say that Craig's service life was short by American military standards. Adopted in 1892, the Craig was replaced by the U.S. Army barely a decade later, but not for lack of quality. Superbly made gun, just superb gun made at Springfield Armory. A uh, wonderful, wonderful piece of machinery. So beautifully made, especially the American variant, that uh, it, it, it inspires a certain amount of admiration just because of its, uh, its uniqueness. The Craig Jorgensen is certainly unique. The first magazine-fed, bolt-action, repeating rifle that was ever standard issue for American troops. The firearm was designed in 1886 by two Norwegians, Army Captain Ole Craig and Master Gunsmith Erik Jorgensen. Both Norway and Denmark adopted the Craig as their standard military rifle, followed by the U.S. This gun really, really works. Reliable, rugged, it's a really beautifully made gun and it's built like a watch. The Craig is best known for its superb machined receiver with the distinctive side-loading magazine. The magazine holds five rounds of 3040 Craig, a cartridge with a 220 grain round nose bullet backed by 40 grains of smokeless powder. It's, uh, it's a good round, a good military round and a reasonable hunting load. To load the rifle, open the side gate and drop in the cartridges one by one. Top off the magazine and close the bolt to chamber the first round. The action works with so little effort to this day, it is a compliment to any bolt rifle to say it is almost as smooth as a Craig. Still, it wasn't perfect. The big disadvantage of the Craig was is that you could not strip or clip load it. Uh, you had to open that magazine and drop in those loads individually. So the Spanish 93 Mauser is basically outclassed it because of that. That fact became clear in 1898. America was at war with Spain over the sinking of the battleship USS Maine. Our soldiers marched to battle in Cuba, armed with Craig Jorgensen rifles. Our cavalry rode with Craig carbines. And at the insistence of Colonel Theodore Roosevelt, 
his Rough Riders went to war with Craig Jorgensen's. Theodore Roosevelt was in command of uh, volunteer troops, so theoretically they should have been carrying trapdoor Springfields. However, he realized the advantage of a Craig over a single shot trapdoor. So he made sure that uh, his troops, the first US volunteer cavalry or the Rough Riders, were armed with Craigs. And in battle against the superior Mausers, the Rough Riders and their Craig Jorgensons were up to the test when TR gave the order to follow me. This one war rifle helped win the day and capture San Juan Hill. TR and the Rough Riders prevailed, but the message was clear. Faster loading was required. The solution would be the 03 Springfield with a license fee paid to Mauser to adopt their action, fees that stopped abruptly when U.S. troops entered the First World War to fight against Germany. Well, you've made it to the end of another Shooting USA video on YouTube, and for that, we thank you. We also thank you for supporting the companies that support Shooting USA and your Second Amendment rights, like Armageddon Gear and, of course, Hornady. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing. Leave a like and a comment. It really does help the channel.